guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about a Canadian brand that is absolutely new to me called Cheekbone Beauty. It was recommended to me by one of my lovely subscribers, EJM. So EJ, thank you so much for putting this brand on my radar. Cheekbone Beauty is owned by a woman named Jen Harper. She is an Ojibwe Canadian and resides in the Niagara region, which is in southern Ontario. Fun fact, I grew up in the Niagara region. I am also an Ojibwe Canadian. I am a status Indian. My father was full-blooded Ojibwe, grew up on a native reserve, and when I was 14, 15, one of those, I actually moved to the reserve with my parents where they had built a house. We lived there for about eight years before ultimately moving back off of the reserve. So this brand speaks to me on that level. And then I dug even further into the why of the brand and the owner has an entire blurb on her website. And also when I received the package for the items that I ordered, there is additional information included um, with the packaging. It states that uh, she views makeup as being a means of expression that has amazing power and she created this brand because she wanted a brand for real people that offered the latest trends and that was super easy. She wanted a brand made in Canada not tested on animals and that gave back to the indigenous community and found that there was nothing that checked all of those boxes and hence Cheekbone Beauty was born. Currently, Cheekbone Beauty has chosen to assist the First Nations Child and Family Caring Society of Canada, and prior to launching the product line, Cheekbone Beauty donated $500 and became a small business member with First Nations Child and Family Caring Society of Canada. The brand is committed to donating 10% of all profits to the First Nations Child and Family Caring Society of Canada's project, that's a long name, but to their project called Shannon's Dream. So then I looked further into what Shannon's Dream, what that organization is all about. So Shannon was a youth Aboriginal who advocated for education for Aboriginal children, in particular government funding towards on-reserve schools. The funding that's available to on-reserve schools is about 30 to 50 percent of what mainstream schools get or off-reserve schools get. And so a lot of these schools, first of all, don't have the funding for libraries, community activities, uh, and they also just don't have enough funding for basic structural safety. So there are incidents of mold and other health concerns that are present in these schools. Tragically, Shannon died in a car crash at the age of 15 before she was able to see her dream played out in terms of additional funding for, in particular, the education system on the reserve that she resided. You'll have to forgive me if I completely butcher the pronunciation of this reserve name, but it is Atawapiskat, I believe. It is an isolated First Nations uh, located in the Kenora District, which is in Northern Ontario. I feel like there was a huge drinking water concern like 10 years ago there and in looking for that I found that there is a current drinking water concern as well to the degree that not only can they not drink the water but they were also cautioned not to bathe in the water residents are being advised to limit their exposure to the water including showers and to not use the water to wash food um, it has potentially dangerous levels of byproducts from a disinfection process so that is, I mean, just one tiny little spotlight in terms of the challenges that especially remote First Nations areas face. I use the word reserve. I honestly don't know if that's no longer politically correct. If it's not, I do not mean to be demeaning in any regard. That is what I grew up hearing it referred to as. That is what we referred to it as when we were residing on one. And it was common language so I truly hope that I'm not speaking out of turn if I am please know that it's like 100% unintentional let's get back into the makeup so uh, the other card that arrived was a thank you card which says miigwech which is Ojibwe for thank you and there it is down here 
And it states on the back that 100% of the profits from their lip kit project goes to support the Caring Society and 10% of all profits support Shannon's dream. So if you go to their website, you will see that they have lip kit sets and then you can also buy items individually. So the last thing that I wanna state about the makeup itself is that it is made in Canada, it is paraben free, hypoallergenic, it's allergy tested, non-comedogenic, fragrance free, and it's not tested on animals. In the FAQ portion of the website, there was a question regarding their tube lipsticks, which I didn't see on the website when I was browsing through, and the reason that they have taken them off of the website is because there was lanolin oil in them and they couldn't guarantee that where they received those ingredients from was producing it in a cruelty-free method. I know nothing about lanolin, but there it is. Now, before we get into the actual products, I do have one more thing that I want to say. So not only was this brand recommended to me by EJM, it was basically funded by another subscriber named Mary. Now, I don't know, she didn't say whether she wanted to remain anonymous or not, but I know that I have more than one Mary subscriber, so you guys are never gonna know which one it is. Um, but she did make a very generous donation through my PayPal link, which is in the description. I do not expect donations. I put it there as a means to be able to, if you choose to do so, if you have the budget for it but I'm not counting on that as part of my income or anything like that. It is just an option that I don't think I've ever actually even mentioned before, so I'm not pushing anybody, please understand that. But she did reach out to me, she did make the donation, and so I wanted to do something with those funds that gave back to our Canadian community because Mary is Canadian, as am I, so full circle. So I just, I, I really looked at what I wanted to do with that because I felt that I wanted to do something quote unquote meaningful. I didn't necessarily just want to put it into the pockets of Sephora or any of these other major brands that would never really notice an additional purchase from their line. And I had remembered the recommendation for Cheekbone Beauty from my other subscriber and I just thought that that was perfect. So that is what I did with that donation is I used it to invest in Cheekbone Beauty, purchase items from them to share with you to hopefully just build more awareness of their brand because like I said, it was one that I had not heard of before. So I do wanna say one more huge thank you to both ladies for putting this brand on my radar and for allowing me to have the funds to make this purchase to share with you. So thank you. Okay, I have talked a lot. I'm sure you wanna see what these items are. First up, lip gloss. It is what I'm wearing here today, and I purchased it in the shade Sundance. They did have quite a few options to choose from, although not as many options as their liquid lipstick, which we will get into. So here is the tube here. It doesn't have the size of it on it. I am going to find my phone. I'm gonna bring up the website so that we can talk about prices and so that if there is information on how much product is contained in here, I can let you know. So the lip gloss retails for $24 Canadian. When I made my purchase, I did obviously a liquid lipstick and a gloss and the gloss came for free. So I'm not sure if that was a promotion or just what was going on, but when I made my purchase, that's how it went, so that was a nice little added perk for me. There are six shades available, and they are seven grams each. Okay, Anastasia Beverly Hills is 4.5 grams, and these ones retail for about $23 as well. So this one actually has more product in it despite being a smaller tube. Um, but you can see there's a lot of clear glass down at the bottom or acrylic or whatever this material is, whereas this one is filled right to the bottom, so looks can be a bit deceiving. So reading about this, it is a lightweight gloss enriched with vitamin E to hydrate while it colors. The shine and gloss last for hours. It is formulated without parabens, not animal tested, and it is safe for sensitive skin. Like I said, it is what I have on my lips right now. It is a very sheer formula but it is incredibly comfortable. It is not sticky 
in the least. It has not created any of those little disgusting strings that some glosses do. It hasn't slipped around. It is, it is like I said, very comfortable. It has just your classic doe foot applicator, not too big, not too small. I did dip back into the tube once just to fully coat my lips, but that is not a complaint. Um, I don't really find that this is a particularly arduous task, so I have no complaints about that. I'll just touch up just so you can see. You can build the opacity slightly, but overall it is a rather sheer formula. That is fine by me, but I just want you to be aware that it's not going to be as bright as what it looks in the tube. And there it is on the hand. You can see it is very glossy and there is a little bit of a scent. They say it's fragrance free. So whatever the ingredients are, they smell divine going in together. There's like a little bit of sweetness. It smells a bit like a MAC lipstick. So I quite like this. I also just like the packaging. It's just classic tube with cheekbone written on the side there. So moving over to the Warrior Women Liquid Lipstick. Each shade is named after an Aboriginal woman who is inspiring in some way. This one in particular that I bought is named Ashley. It is named after Ashley Collingbull, who is a well-known Cree woman uh, from West Edmonton, Alberta. In 2015, she became the first Canadian and the first Indigenous woman to ever win the Miss Universe title. So there's no information in terms of the actual lipstick itself on the website that I could find. And again, it doesn't say how many grams are in the product, but it is generously sized. And again, the price is $29. I'm going to remove the gloss and apply this one just so that you can see it in action. So again, it has a nice doe foot applicator. There it is. And there's like basically no scent at all to this product. I'll just do one hand swatch here just so you can see how pigmented that is. There is no patchiness or streakiness once it's applied to the lips and it is an incredibly comfortable formula. Oh, knocking stuff over again. I am not sure if I'm going to get this video up before my Natasha Denona Sunrise review video. If that one is up, this is the lipstick that I was wearing in it. If it's not up, you'll see it eventually. Um, it is so lightweight. Again, not sticky at all. And the nice thing that I found with this lipstick is that it kind of moves with your lips. So even after it's dried down, if I smile or move my mouth around, it doesn't crack, it doesn't get flaky, it's not uncomfortable at all once it dries down, you don't get that drying effect. In terms of the transfer proof, we'll do the good old kiss test, so you can see the back of my hand is clean. And there is just a very, very minor trace of it there. Um, so. By my standards, I would consider that to be transfer proof. Um, I did find after filming my Sunrise Review palette that the very inner portion was starting to get a little bit gummy, I guess would be the word. I'd been taking drinks. I talked for probably about 45 minutes straight while I was filming that. So a lot of mouth action and whatnot going on. So. I'm not overly surprised by that, but the remainder of it was perfectly in place, didn't transfer onto my teeth, it didn't feather around, it didn't gum up in the corners of my mouth. It is a surprisingly beautiful product. So I am very, very happy with this. I tend to be rather particular when it comes to liquid lipsticks. I don't like that super drying feeling that, say, the ColourPop Ultra Mattes have. This one, it honestly doesn't feel like I'm wearing anything on my lips at all. I am a fan. I am a fan. So the last thing that I picked up in this order is their Perfect Brows. This retails for $24 Canadian and it comes in three different shades, two different shades, blonde and brunette. 
I would like to see them expand that shade range just so that there's a little bit more variety for people to choose from, but overall the brunette works well with me. I have it on my brows right now. It has a rather unique wand to it. So again, I love the packaging, like it's just sleek and chic, and I like that. There's nothing extraneous about any of these packages. So you pull it out, and it's rather bulbous. Like it is a rather unique looking wand. And at first I was concerned that that was gonna be unwieldy and just a mess, and it's not. So I'll see if I can reapply as I sit here. But at any rate, I can demonstrate. So it fits perfectly in the size of my brow, and then I was able to just kind of drag it through and angle it a little bit so that I could get the tail. The very tip of the tail, I think I would go in with a pencil if I wanted to fill those in, just because there's nothing really precise in here. But overall, I am happy with this one. It has not made my brows crunchy at all. I've had it on for a good few hours at this point, but nothing has gotten flaky. Even after I had applied it, well, I've just applied it, so it is still wet. There's like a tiny, tiny, if you want to focus, there's a tiny bit of transfer, but once it's dried, once it's been on for even like 10 minutes, no transfer. And I actually rubbed like pretty, pretty aggressively just to see if it would transfer and no and all of my hairs have stayed in the direction that I placed them in. So to me, this is a winner. The wand is a little bit, there's a little bit of a learning curve to it, but nothing terrible. I prefer this shape to the Kaja one that I have. Um, the Kaja one I'll show you is just so long that even though it's narrow, it's just really long and I find that more difficult to maneuver than this round little guy over here. So, oh my god, I don't, honestly, I don't know what my hair is doing. I got it cut and now I don't know what to do with it. Uh, and it's going to rain today, so it's like growing. Um, the life of having curly hair. Anyways, those are my thoughts on the products from Cheekbone Beauty that I picked up. Of the three, the liquid lipstick is my favorite, but the other two are pretty close contenders for that top spot. I am very happy with this purchase and I would certainly purchase more from them. I'm looking forward to seeing this brand grow. I would like to try some of their cheek products as well just to test out that formula. And overall, I'm just really happy with this purchase. So again, thank you Mary, thank you EJ for putting this on my radar and for making it happen. I really do appreciate your support and your recommendation. I should have said this right from the get-go, but this video is not sponsored in any way. Cheekbone Beauty, Jen Harper, they have absolutely no idea who I am. I just wanted to shine the light on them because I've been so impressed with their products. I know I'm going to do at least one more video on a Canadian indie brand, possibly two more. But I am going to, I'll do a sneak peek here. I am going to be doing a spotlight video on Cleona Cosmetics. This has been sitting in the background of some of my videos. I just took it out because I was going to put these two together and then quickly realized they both deserve their own separate videos. So look forward to a Cleona Cosmetics specific, holy crap. So look forward to a Cleona Cosmetics video coming up soon as well. Other than that, the Cheekbone Beauty website is going to be linked down below if you want to go check them out. And I thank you so much for taking the time to watch. I will see you in my next video. Until then, just be a decent human being. Bye for now.